Hey everyone, we're here today and we are on week six of our Pray First series. We've been doing every Thursday at released at five o'clock and you're able to view it on demand uh, as you're uh, free. And uh, we're just excited to uh, talk through uh, the Lord's Prayer and I have Barbara here with me and I asked Barbara to join me because she's really a prayer warrior. I've had many conversations just about the Lord uh, with her in the office and uh, prayer and spiritual warfare. So I really want to invite her. I think she has a lot to add uh, to the conversation and uh, we're just excited to share with you and pray that uh, today that God speaks to you. And uh, we've been going through, like I said, the Lord's Prayer and uh, we all know the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a model for us to pray. It's it's not a, uh, you should pray this way, this way only, is just a model and to follow that Jesus shared with his disciples. And uh, we all kind of know it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, which we covered last week. And uh, this week, we were on, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I think it's really important in this season to realize that we are in a spiritual, an actual spiritual battle in war. That uh, Satan is doing everything he possibly can to distract us, to get us off of, uh, of Jesus and his heart for us and what he has for us in this season. And uh, it's important for us to be able to equip ourselves to do spiritual warfare. Uh, we all know... Uh, There's a very important scripture that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. And uh, our battle is not against one another. Uh, We are called as a church to be unified, but our battle is against uh, the enemy who is uh, doing everything he can to disrupt uh, the body of Christ. Uh, And so we just want to have a conversation about that today. Uh, So in your prayer life, Barbara, uh, we were talking before we turned on the cameras a little bit. Uh, just how uh, spiritual warfare is a literal battle, and it almost feels like at some point there's a shift in our in our prayer right. to go towards that. Maybe share a little bit about what you were sharing okay. with me before. I know I don't know if you've experienced this before, but when I was talking to Adam about it, you'll be praying like your everyday prayers, and you're worshiping, you're praising, you're doing all the things that you normally do before God. And all of a sudden, there's like a shift in your spirit, and just something just rises up, and you start taking an authority, but it's not a, it's an authority over Satan. It's not an authority over people or anything like that, but you are actually in battle, and you're fighting Satan. It could be about your children. It could be about yeah. your church or whatever. For me, it's usually about my children, you know, and I'm going in there, but I have the authority because Jesus has given us authority as children. We're praying children. from a place of victory because yes. he's already won the victory, so we're applying right. what he's already done. Yeah, yeah. and um, it, it's, it's like Adam was saying is when, once you finish that, God will, the Holy Spirit will show you when it's released, yeah. when you've finished praying and battling Satan. But it takes all your energy. Yeah, it's a labor. Said. Yeah. It's a labor, You're tired. literal labor. You're tired. And I told him, I said, you know, in the past, when I think of spiritual warfare, I always want to get out my combat boots. I want to put on combat yep. boots and put on the armor of God yep. and go in there and battle like you because you are at war. Yeah. My, my grandma would make me every morning uh, before I went to school, um, she'd make me put on the armor of God, which was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Brush play of righteousness, yeah. uh, shield of faith, I believe. Uh, yeah, just going through the whole thing. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a real thing. It is a real thing. And once you come out of that, when, when you've prayed your prayer, you know, when the Holy Spirit's released you from that, there's a faith that has risen up in you. Yeah. Because when you go in to battle Satan, that faith even gets stronger and stronger, you right. know, as, because of that authority that Jesus has given to us. Yep. But your faith just seems to rise up, and you're just like, you're in there just really warring, you right. know, and, and you're fighting. Even if you're a timid person, when you get in that spiritual warfare, you're fighting that enemy. Yeah, it, it, it feels good knowing that you're fighting from a place of victory, and so you're yeah. re- literally applying it, and you're seeing... Uh, things change in the spiritual realm. Yes. And uh, when we're agreeing with what the Lord's plans are for us, uh, the first part of the Lord's Prayer, um, 
uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Applying God's kingdom now, here now on earth yes. as it is in heaven, that we don't have to uh, settle for whatever diagnosis you might have That's or right. whatever people might be saying that are negative, that we can apply spiritual warfare and see uh, God move and change and, and heal and uh, move on our behalf. Yeah. But here's one note to remember. When you get into spiritual warfare, you're not coming against the people. You're not coming against flesh yeah. in any way. Spiritual warfare is against the enemy. It's against Satan. Yeah. It's not against people. So if you think you're in spiritual warfare against people, that's an error. Because yeah. it's only against the enemy. And it's led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, you need to be led by the Holy Spirit when you enter into that battle with Satan. But just remember, like the verse said, it's not against flesh and blood. Right. It's only against the demonic spirits yep. that's coming against your children or whoever. So what are some different ways? Uh, one thing that comes to my mind would be uh, worship is part of our spiritual warfare. Yes. Uh, you see it throughout the entire Old Testament and, and New Testament. Uh, Paul and Silas in the jail and they're worshiping God and the uh, walls come tumbling down and they're free and uh, just God moving like that. I mean, you can see so many instances where worship plays a huge role in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. um, and we got to recognize that as we set our heart on God and set our attention on Him, that He's able to uh, speak through, through us to allow us to uh, do spiritual warfare. And, and I, think, I think, too, like when we're worshiping the Lord, we're agreeing, especially corporate worship, has such a huge... Um, it brings people together to pray the same thing at the same time. Yes. And there's a lot of power in that when we're saying, um, break these chains, break down these walls. Like there's power in that. We've been doing a lot of that at the church. And I just encourage you that when we're singing songs like that, that's time for us to go to battle and time for us to go to war and do spiritual warfare over everything that's happening in our country, over everything that's happening within the church, and within the body of Christ. You know, I think worship is so strong in spiritual warfare because before Lucifer, as he was first known, got yep. cast down to earth because of his disobedience and his pride, he was, that's what he did. Yep. He worshiped God all the time. And I think that's why our worship is so effective now because he no longer has that. Right. <laughs> it, it was taken from him, and that was part of who yeah. he was created to be. Yep. You know, was the worshiper and, and the praise of God. Yep. You know, and now that he can't, here we are. And we're getting to do it. Yep. So it even makes him more angrier. Yep. You know, because we're worshiping God. Yep. You know, the true God. For sure. Yeah. Um, so another part of our spiritual warfare is just praying scripture, I believe, as well. Yes. So you can quote yes. scripture over any situation and apply it and uh, and see God move. So I just encourage you, like if you're going through something, uh, find scripture that the Lord gives you. Pray about it. Find it. Read the word. Uh, find the promises of God and just... Man, that's how you break the attacks of the enemy is just going and praying scripture over situations and applying it to it and uh, just seeing God move. And as you are doing that, there's a hope that rises up within you. Yes. Because uh, if you just look at the uh, surface of what is happening sometimes in our lives, what's currently happening in uh, the state of our country, uh, we can easily lose hope. But, uh, man, praying scripture and applying it over it, there's this hope that builds. There's this yes. faith that builds up. And uh, find some scripture and just quote it over situations. I know. I'm always repeating the one about um, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yep. That's what I'm always telling the enemy. Yep. You the weapon no may weapon. be formed, but man, it's not going <laughs> to prosper. It's not going to prosper over me. <laughs> yep. You know, because I am a child of God and I have that authority in me. Yep. And there's times that we don't think that we have that authority or we just sort of lay that authority on the shelf like we do our faith and everything else. Mm -hmm. But... During this time, because of what we've been going through, what you just said, we need to pick that authority back up, yep. you know, and we need to use that authority because he died on the cross for us. He shed his blood for us, and he has given us authority. Yep. We have authority Amen. over everything. Yep. Yep. You know, so use it now. Yep. So I just kind of grabbed a couple of scriptures that I believe uh, you could use um, to to pray over situations and um 
I love this one, Psalm 34 eight. I'm going to run through them very quickly. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Yes. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Joshua 1, 9. I have not commanded you... Uh, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isn't that comforting knowing that God is with us wherever we go? Psalm 34, 10, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Uh, Psalm 37, 4, take the light in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, John 8, 36, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You might be addicted to something, or going through uh, whatever, and you don't have, you feel like you don't have freedom. But if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. And just declare that scripture over that. Second uh, uh, Chronicles seven fourteen, and I love this. And I've, the Lord has been bringing this back up for the past two months uh, in my life. If my people who were called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Church, we are called to go to war, actual spiritual warfare over what is happening and the promises of God that if we will seek his face, we will humble ourselves. If we will go to battle, if we will pray, then he will heal our land. It has nothing to do with anything other than if we humble ourselves, if we seek his face, he will heal our land. And I know a lot of us feel discouraged. A lot of us are going through difficulty. A lot of us have maybe even lost our jobs, um, have gotten a bad diagnosis from the doctor, whatever it might be. He will heal our land yes. if we go to battle, if we go to war. And I'm telling you, it is time for the church to rise up and to do something. Uh, and it's through prayer. It's not through online no. <laughs> talking back and forth. That's not what I'm talking about. It is, it is through prayer. It's through humbling ourselves and praying and just seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord on your own time and just watching God move. And I really believe this is a season that we're going to see harvest and even though that uh, things are hard and difficult, we can count it all joy when we're going through trials because we know that God is refining us. We know that God is moving us. And then maybe it's just for uh, the sake of his church rising up. That's really what I believe it's for. And, um, and I just really sense that on the horizon there is a move of God like we haven't seen before in the church. And there's revival coming. And that's what I'm praying for. And I just ask for you to do the same and pray. Yes. And so uh, let's just pray right now. And can so, Barbara. One thing yeah, sure. Pray? Um, my mother used to always tell me that she'd go, don't be mealy mouth. Mm -hmm. And she would tell me mealy mouth because people would just do things or say things. And I'd go, okay. Okay, well, sometimes that's how we want to go into spiritual warfare. Okay, you need to stop. Yeah. You, know, you cannot do that. You have to take that authority. Make sure you walk in there with authority. You tell him he has no authority over your children. He has no authority over your husband. Go in there with that authoritative voice yep. and battle with Satan. You yep. can't walk in there and just be mealy mouth, as my mother used to call right. it. You have to really go in there in a war spirit. Yep. You know? Apply your authority. Yes, apply your authority to yeah. that. Amen. Why don't you pray for us, Barbara? Oh, Father God, we just thank you for this day. Yes, and, Jesus. and Father, I just um, thank you that we can just come before you, Father, and, and that you guide us in every direction that we move in. And Father God, I just ask you that you would just be with the people, Father, and and that for those who don't know about spiritual warfare, Father, I ask you that you would allow the Holy Spirit just to teach them how to, how to warfare against the enemy, Father, and take authority in their life, Father. And um, I just thank you for everything, Father. Yes, I thank you for this time, Father. I thank you for the teaching of, of prayer, Father. It's so important right now in this time of day, Father. 
And Father God, we just love you and we honor you and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So find a prayer closet. Find a place that you go to every single day and you pray. Set aside a time and set aside a place. And yes. go to war. Go to battle. I think it's crucial for the church to rise up. And uh, just watch yes. God, like in Second Chronicles, heal our land through the power of prayer and through our humility. So we love you guys and praise encourages you today. And uh, God bless you. God bless you.